Good afternoon. I'm totally unprepared for this. Um, I didn't bring any images. I used some uh, on Friday and, and we couldn't really see them, so I spoke without images, which I think in a way is, is better. <coughs> so I am uh, French, I was born in France, and um, I've been living in England for the last uh, 40 odd years. And and lived in, uh, in Egypt for about six and um, studying with Isaac Fanous since 1982. So um, in 1987 I began my research into Coptic iconography, though I'd been studying with Fanous since 82. And um, did my doctorate at the Royal College uh, in London, the first, the first ever doctorate from the Royal College on anything religious or remotely religious. So, so um, Coptic iconography uh, is, is now, there's a thesis about it at the Royal College. And um, yeah, so I've been working uh, and, and studying at the same time and researching for the last uh, 30 odd years, 35 years or so into Coptic iconography and what, what, I've, what I, I obviously I've noticed quite a lot of quite a lot of um, issues with iconography in the Coptic church which I, at first uh, when I first started my, my work when I first saw the work of Fanus and went to Egypt for the first time I was expecting to see icons um, everywhere of, of you know this caliber and this quality that I'd seen in London but in fact, when I got there, I didn't find any. And every church I went to, uh, I would see these sort of nondescript, um, sort of Italian uh, art. Not very good quality Italian art, <laughs> actually. <laughs> <coughs> and, um, and so I was, I was, I was you know, it, I was um, intrigued by that. And how did that come about? And, and, and why? For instance, when you look at um, Orthodox churches, Greek, Russian, um, Ethiopian, um, you see that the art in the church reflects the people and reflects their culture and reflects you know, their history and, and their spirituality and so on and so forth. But not so in the Coptic church. And uh, so, so during the course of my research, I found out that, um, thank you, I found out that there are certain, certain uh, um, factors that, that made this, um, that created this, this situation. For instance, the influx of missionaries, foreign missionaries in the uh, 18th century, 19th, oh well, 17th, 18th century, um, Catholic missionaries, Protestant missionaries, American missionaries, and um, there was some sort of uh, tacit understanding between the caliph, uh, in those days, uh, Ismail Basha, uh, Ismail Mohammed, and so on. And uh, you know, they made a deal basically to convert the Copts, and, and, but don't touch the Muslim, you know, don't, don't try and convert the Muslims because um, you know, that's uh, haram. <laughs> so, so they were given land, they were given um, everything they needed really. So, so they built schools and they started educated, uh, uh, educating the, uh, the, the Christians. And this obviously had a, a huge um, influence on the Coptic Church. And, uh, but I mean, I, if one is a purist, one would say it's a very negative influence on the Coptic Church. Uh, because not only the theology became warped in many ways, and, but you know, the art actually disappeared. So it was, there were no uh, there was no liturgical art in the Coptic Church until uh, 1958, 1960, when Isaac Fanus came to start his, you know, to start his work. And, and um, so we're looking at 150 years of, of um, hiatus, um, one could say even darkness, 
when it comes to art. The, so one, one may say, you know, art is, 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 is not that important in the church because, you know, we can you know, praise God and worship God without art and without anything, really. But um, in the con within the context of, a, of a, you know, an orthodox church, art plays a huge role, plays a very significant role. And um, because sacred art is, or liturgical art, as, as, you know, it's in the name, so it's liturgical art, that means it is part, it is an integral, integral part of the liturgy. And, um, and then um, when you have sort of foreign, foreign art, like, like the, the um, Italian art that is now prevalent, um, I should say prevalent in the Coptic Church, I mean, uh, probably 90% of Coptic buildings are, are, are um, decorated with, with uh, Italian art. See, this is the thing, that sacred iconography is not decoration, has nothing to do with decoration. It, it's it's um, nothing to do with illustration either, or graphic art, or, you know, so, th so all these these people that are doing this work now uh, in, the, in the churches, they all come from this background. They're either graphic art background, um, illustration, you know, they go to, to school to learn illustration, and uh, cartoons, you know, cartoonists. Um, um, and um, what happens is that they <coughs> apply the, the principles of cartoons to icons. Right, which is really not not uh, correct at all. So the idea of iconography, in fact, the idea of liturgical art, including architecture, right? B because the, uh, uh, architecture and iconography are linked. They are two sides of the same coin. When you build a church, you always build a niche, and when there is a niche or an apse, uh, that is for the, icon, the icon of the uh, Pantocrator, it's specially, specially built for it. So on one level you can s say that the church is built for the icons, to, to receive the icons. And the general idea, really, which is very ancient, is that you are bringing down heaven to earth, right? The ancient Egyptians had, uh, of course, uh, this idea was, was, was uh, very important to them. And when you see the temples, the way the temples are even uh, uh, placed on the landscape with the Nile in the middle. Th so this is the, an image of the, um, the Milky Way, right? So the, the Egypt was a, 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 the earthly Milky Way. And so the, the whole idea of bringing down heaven to earth is, is, is central to iconography. I can um, <laughs> attempt a little drawing on this. It's very bad with, uh, drawing with this. But for instance, the, the icon of the Pantocrator uh, is based on an ellipse. Mm? And then we have the four bodiless creatures. Mm? like this. And <coughs> the church, now a church building is very much the same. Instead of an ellipse, we'll have a, a circle, okay? This is heaven. And then you square the circle, this is earth, right? Earth is a square. Square because it, of the material world, yeah? This, it represents the material world. The circle represents infinity. Okay, so a church, which is basically a, a cube, mm, if, you, if you translate that into 3D, the cube and the dome, mm, this is where earth and heaven are, are, uh, are united. Okay, so that's the essence of this. That, in essence, is the, is the... So, going back to the Pantocrator, there is a hypothetical rectangle here and the four creatures. Mm -hmm. So we have, here is a square usually, although it is usually 
um, turn into a rectangle for the nave mm? and here we have the apse and then again we have the transepts so that's the plan of a church which is also the figure of a, of a, of a human being mm? so <coughs> So these ideas, we have also the, the ciborium. If you go to, to uh, large Coptic churches, you will see, uh, find ciboriums, which are, uh, it's a dome that is put over the altar. Mm? And so you have the same idea. The, the, the dome, seen from above, the dome is here, and the pillars, four pillars, which represent the four evangelists, uh, and then in the middle of it you have the square which is earth which is the altar mm? so basically the ciborium is a reduced um, um, is, is a reduced plan of a church <coughs> so and then going back to the ellipse you know with Christ Pantocrator in, inside the ellipse you know, on, the, on the throne. Uh, the ellipse is a squashed circle, so the ellipse and the circle are related. Okay? I'm just going into a little geometry here, ju just very simple to, to uh, explain certain things about iconography. And uh, so the ellipse is interchangeable or it is uh, a, a, t a type of Vesica. A vesica Pisces is obtained by two circles and you have a third shape here which is called the Vesica. Now, now uh, from the, I would say from the 5th century onwards at, um, until about the 12th century, everywhere in, uh, in Christendom used this uh, Vesica uh, and have you know, with Christ in the middle of it, right? The vesica itself is a symbol of the Virgin Mary, and the vesica is is um, a, a, um, what can I say it simply? You know, the the idea is the the like uh, the the um, uh, um, the cell, the division of cells, right? Mm -hmm. So you have you have you have one cell. And then you have another, and these two, and then another, and another, and another. But the, the idea is that the vesica is is reproduced in in this way. And um, in our the Pantocrator we are doing now, we have used uh, this symbolism in it called the flower of life, yeah, which is which is a, a, a certain uh, geometrical diagram that that symbolizes this idea and um, yeah, I think we'll leave it there and uh, geometry is, is, is of paramount, you know, paramount importance in, in um, iconography and you cannot really have iconography without geometry you cannot have ge uh, architecture without geometry either <coughs> Ge geometry is has no beginning and no end. Mm? That's why it is the, it, in, in a way it is used uh, uh, as a language to express the divine, to express the spiritual realm, to express what is invisible. Mm? Like, like arithmetics, like um, mathematics, geometry is uh, infinite, basically. So no one actually sat down and created geometry. <laughs> geometry. As a matter of fact, God created the world through geometry in a, in, a, in a very strange way. So here we are. The idea of bringing down heaven to earth is central to iconography. It's central to the Christian faith, really. And the icon of the Pantocrator, which we are doing now at St. Athanasius Church, um, is really the most important icon the most important image in the Coptic Church, um, because it 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 and you know it all the the mysteries of the faith are enshrined in in this particular icon. Any question? <laughs>
before I go off on my, uh, on my uh, meanderings. Any specific question? No? Yes? Ladies first. Oh, two. So I'll um, say one, you say one. Two. Okay. 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 Um, what made you attracted to iconography? What made you? What made me uh, attract? Yes, very good question. Um, I don't know actually. I, I I think I think beauty was 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 the the most uh, was the strongest um, thing about it. Uh, when I first saw the the works of Isaac Fanous at in the London Church. You know, that's when I, I became uh, fascinated by, by it because I, you know, I didn't know whether they were very ancient or, or very contemporary. You, it, you know, it has this, you know, they have this, um, this kind of um, feeling about them that you don't know, you know. In fact, icons, you know, iconography is timeless. You know, it's supposed to, to be timeless. And th that's why these people who paint these things nowadays you have you see some some of them have the pyramids in it and have you know all this so, sort of geo, you know geo um, yeah geographical landscape uh, uh, which is absolutely relevant in icons or or for instance the the uh, the Pantocrator has the the earth as his footstool mm, as it's written in the Psalms and the earth is his footstool well the earth should not have the the continents and uh, the oceans and you know and, you know Tokyo and Paris and whatever <laughs> it's ridiculous right because we are talking about <laughs> sorry <laughs> we are talking about something that is timeless right and and icons must reflect the timeless and i think that's what really uh really uh, got me when i when i first saw this um, this style of iconography. I mean, of course, I was, you know, um, acquainted with with Russian and Greek icons and so on. But I'd never seen any anything like uh, Isaac Fanus's work, really. So that's why really, that's why I. Uh, but in another in another way, I didn't choose to become an iconographer. This is another thing which is um, interesting. That I think you know it's the other way around. Uh, you know, I sort of iconography it shows me in a way. I don't know why, but um, and you know, it iconography is not really a, a job. Y you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna like go to school and and say, oh, mom, I want to be an iconographer when I grow up. Y you know, I mean, it's not really doesn't work like that. You know, it's a bit like being a priest. Yeah, you know, though I'm not a priest in uh, in sort of uh, you know, I'm not ordained in anything. Yeah, you know, but. But it's a vocation, you know, like the priesthood is a vocation. Not any guy can become a priest. You know, you have to have a certain, I mean, I'm sure Father Michael will, uh, will back me up on that. You have to have a certain attitude, you know, a certain way of, of, um, of being. Uh, and um, so it's, a, it's a very much like that also to, for, you know, iconography is really is a life's work, you know. Some, somebody was asking me last night, you know, um, don't you have a real job? <laughs> 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 so I said, uh, I said, uh, no, you can't have a job and do this. Y you know, it's, it's either this or your job, right? So, so it's, you know, you can't be a, a part-time iconographer. Like you, you can't really be a part-time priest. You know what I mean? And um, <coughs> but I, I, you know, I thought that was interesting. Next question. Yeah, I I don't know if my question might be a bigger, become a bigger thing, but I was wondering, is there certain criteria to what can be placed to, to become an icon? So can I take any image from the scripture and turn it into an icon, or is there specific yeah. criteria? Yes, yes, they are very specific, highly specific. Um, you know, I'll give you an example. There's um, St. Mark's Cathedral in Cairo has just been um, not renovated because there, there was nothing in it in the first place, but has been, uh, you know, decorated. <laughs> and, and outside on the, on the, you know, you have the front gate and then 
and then on one hand, on one side you have Christ knocking at the door. Yeah. So Christ is knocking at the door of his cathedral. What does that mean exactly? Does, it, does that mean that there's nobody, uh, you know, to answer, <laughs> let him in? You know? So, so, you know, so what I'm what I'm getting at is that the the uh, subject matter of Christ knocking at the door is not an iconographic subject. Yeah, it's it's a it's a, it's like a parable in. Uh, and it's not an iconographic subject. So you have, you know, or, or somebody asked me one day to, to, to make him a, a cross and, and, and somebody, so, and, and there's a storm. Oh yeah, okay, so oh, hold on, let me remember that. There was a rock, right, and, and there's a cross on the rock and then there's a storm, he's in the sea and he's holding on to the cross like that. I said, no, no, stop right there, stop right there. <laughs> this is not, this is not an icon. Right? So, there are, I mean, you know, the, the whole thing can become very, very, very silly, very, uh, uh, and so far from, uh, far removed from iconography. So, yeah, there are very specific criteria to, to, um, to follow, you know, and there's something called a canon of proportion. And the, the canon of proportion is, is really what, what gives the, the you know, the style and what gives, um, you know, the beauty to the icon because it's, it's based on geometry and, and, you know, this is all about proportion, this is all about, um, <coughs> about beauty basically and harmony and so on. And uh, yeah, so one, you know, one has to study that, one, one has to understand that, digest it and then, and then you know, use it in, in, in the work, yes. The, sorry, just before so, we talk, yes. there was a specific example we were discussing before. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you want to? Yeah, it was one I had brought up when we were not sure. Uh, the image of St. Paul falling off his horse as he uh, right, right. on the road. Right, right. To Damascus. Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. Which is an image of, you know, the awakening, transformation. Yeah, epiphany, yes, yes. yes. That's no, that, that is definitely, uh, as a matter of fact, um, the church of um, St. Peter and St. Paul in Tanta, I think, I believe, uh, has one of those by Isaac Fanus, uh, the, on the way to Damascus. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. The lady was first over there, sorry. Mine is a simple question. Right. Um, do you have any disciples currently under you who will continue the proper <laughs> <laughs> That's not a simple question. <laughs> it's anything but simple. Right now, I have two. I have two. Uh, I brought with me two assistants who are not Coptic, and uh, the the fact is that the I, you know I can't find any Coptic uh, assistants, or I can't find any Coptic anybody to 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 study. Uh, iconography. Nobody's interested in studying iconography. Yeah, right Who? <laughs> oh. oh. My question is, what is iconography? What is iconography? Yeah, like what, what constitutes what can be an icon and what can't be an icon? If it's from the Bible, if it's scriptural, then how do we discern if it has potential to be an icon? Well, <coughs> good question. Um, an icon is an image, right? it's called, you know, an icon means image, and this image is uh, done according to certain rules, right? So, so, so if you don't know the rules, you cannot make the image. So uh, when something is done uh, from one's own, uh, mm, you know, creativity, as it, as it were, um, it's not considered, it cannot be considered an icon if it doesn't follow the rules. Okay. Okay. It's like, it's, you know, it's like hymnography. Uh, hymnography, you go, if you go to church, you have to sing the hymns in a certain way, okay? Because if you sing them differently, then you're not, you're not part of what's going on, <laughs> you understand? So, and you're doing your own thing. So what's happening in the Coptic church right now is that everybody's doing their own thing. You know, or you don't bring a guitar to the liturgy, because you, you know we don't you know we don't use guitars, right? So, so um, 
I think I understand your question. You know, what is an icon? I mean, I, you know. I think, um, I think my question was like I got a little bit confused by the example of Jesus knocking on the door because it's from Revelation. So, how <laughs> is it is it the visual style that was? It's a parable. So uh, parables cannot be. Some parables. Icon? Some parables can, some parables uh, it's very, very dodgy, you see. <coughs> so Jesus knocking at the door was never an icon, okay? It, it became a, a thing in the Italian style. Uh, uh, but it was never, you never see a Russian or Greek or Georgian icon of Christ knocking at the door. It's not, it's not just not done, okay? It's it's a parable. It's a it's a parable. It's an analogy. <coughs> it, it, it's not, um, you know, part of the of the the um, repertoire of iconog you know of iconography. Hmm. Yes. So you said in the beginning that there, you know, was all this Coptic art, and then it was was it removed or. Well, is that what we're seeing in the cloisters, for example? Yeah, yeah, in the monasteries, yes. In the, in the well, British Museum, and, right. and if so, then why aren't we asking for those things to be returned, or should, you know, should we? Which things? The things in the museum to be returned to Egypt? Yeah, like the things that were taken away, like, you know, like there's other artifacts that Of course, everything should go back to Egypt, because that's where it belongs. I mean, um, you know, they, uh, I, th I think, I think the, some of, uh, okay, Bawit. Has anybody heard of Bawit? Does that ring a bell? Really? Well, Bawit is the most important Coptic monastic center in the 6th century. Okay, so it's central to, to, um, to uh, the Coptic church. I mean, if, if you're a Copt, you should absolutely know about Bawit. You know, it's like I'm a French man and I don't know about the Eiffel Tower. You know, it, it's, it's, you have to know about these things. You have to really study your history uh, in order to be able to, you know, see things um, in, <coughs> in, a, in, in a different way. And um, one of the niches at Bawit uh, was in Le Louvre uh, for, for quite some years and then was returned to Egypt. So it's now in the Coptic Museum. Coptic Museum has a, a whole now is, is uh, you know has a whole collection of of niches apses from Bawit. So you have Bawit, you have Saqqara, you have the Kelias in uh, in in um, near Alexandria, and all these places where where um, uh, uh, Coptic um, spiritual centers, right, with 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 loads of monks and and. Um, and nuns, um, <coughs> for, for instance, the, the red monastery, the red and white monastery, you know, red and white, red, <laughs> red and white and black are very important uh, colors in Egypt. I've always been. I, actually, the Egyptian flag is red, white, and black, but there's a reason for that. The, the ancient Egyptians, um, for the ancient Egyptians, if you look at the ancient Egyptian crown, right? The two crowns, the lower uh, and you know the upper, and it, one is red and one is white, right? The white one is is uh, um, masculine and the red one is feminine. Well, I'm not talking about gender or sex. Here. I'm talking about principles, and um, so then you, so. You have the red and white monastery in in uh, in Upper Egypt in Sohag, founded by um, uh, Saint Shenouti. And uh, in one was uh, was for the for the for men, yeah? and the other one was for women. Right. So, so and they are built like temp like Egyptian temples, you know, with the same sort of uh, I don't remember the amount of degree, you know, the angle, the, the walls are built, built just like an Egyptian temple. And, um, <coughs> and the icons of the Red Monastery were recently um, restored, absolutely amazing, right, from about the 7th or 8th century. So you have, so the Coptic, there's so much to talk about, I don't even know where to start, it's like a, it's like <laughs> a sea, you have to swim. And, uh, you know, 
the Coptic period from the 4th century to the 7th century which corresponds to the Edict of Milan and the you know, promulgation of uh, Christianity as the uh, official religion of the empire, that's 311-312, the and then to, the, to 642 AD, which is the invasion of Islam. Right, that period is considered the Coptic period. It can, one can push it a little bit more to the 8th century, because um, the Red Monastery was about uh, was, was not built, it was built much earlier under St. Shenuti, about 5th century or so. But, but the art in it has many layers, uh, and so over, you know, two or three hundred years. And um, what was I talking about that, by the way? I can't remember now. Um, red and white, yes. So, so yes, so you know, it, it's very important basically to, you know, just like people are interested in theology, yeah, y you know, uh, you must also be interested in iconography because iconography is, is the, you know, it's Egyptian culture is a Coptic culture, it's Coptic identity, right? The, the, the identity of the Copts is in the iconography. So now when you go to a church and you see this, you know, it's this you know, bl blue, blonde hair, blue eyes, Jesus Christ with flowing garments and all that, that's, that's, that's I mean, that is total madness, <laughs> right? This is not, this is, you know, as Coptic as I am, you know, Russian or something. It's, it's, it's really, no, but I mean, you know, it's very basic and, and, uh, and I'm not mocking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really serious about this. This is serious. You'd never go to Russia and see Coptic icons in a Russian church. Never, you know. Um, so why in Egypt, you know? This is, this is where the, the problem starts. So back to Isaac Fanous. Isaac Fanous is the answer to this problem. Um, but uh, what has happened is, is that there was, okay, the 150 years of complete darkness. Then Fanus comes, you know, under Pope Kyrillos, um, goes to Paris, retrieves the tradition and the iconology, the symbolism, the geometry, everything from the Russians. Okay, then goes back to Egypt and nobody wants to listen to him. Why should we, you know, why should we study with you? You are one of us and stuff like that. You know, this is exactly what, what happened. Who are you to tell us what to do? Because you went to Paris and, you know, that sort of thing. That really, um, so what they did, basically, they ended up, you know, stealing the, the, the technique. You know, they go there and they say, oh, what do you use for that? You know, and then they go home and try and do it. And, um, and, uh, but when it comes to the iconology, that is the theory, behind the, the technique, nobody's dead. It's gone, you know. So, so and Isaac Fanus did have um, uh, pupils, you know, did have uh, assistants. I mean, you know, I know some of them because I studied with them when I was uh, in Cairo. But none of them um, actually developed on, on, on it. You know, Fanus used, used, to, used to say, I, I built a very strong, um, you know, base, a very strong, um, what's the word? Um, foundation. foundation, thank you. And, uh, you know, but others will have to build on it. You know, and, and he did, he built the strongest foundation ever. But nobody built on it, you know. They built sand castles around it, but never built on it. So, which means that they never um, studied, they never understood or tried to understand even the theories behind the icon. Because, you know, the icons, are only the reflection of, of these theories that um, are the most important. Um, you know, so, so, the, so the invisible side of iconography is more important than the visible side of it. The visible side of it is just the lines and the colors, but the invisible side of it is the, is the whole, you know, theology, the, 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 the everything, basically, symbolism, you know, the language of symbolism is very, very important. This is that, you know, the vocabulary, the visual vocabulary is there. If you don't use that, you're not, you're not really doing anything. You're not saying anything. You're just making pretty pictures. And, and the church doesn't need pretty pictures. It needs images that reflect the faith and that can, can not only transmit the faith, but, you know, can 
also act as a kind of, of uh, you know, identity for the people, uh, you know. I don't know, I mean, it, it, to me it seems very obvious, but it seems that um, it's not that obvious for most people in, in, in the church because of the, the th you know, I mean, St. Mark's Cathedral is, is a very, very potent example that, you know, it should have gone to Fanus, but for some political reasons, I won't even go into that, it didn't. And um, now we are, we, are, we are left with this, this sort of mishmash, you know, koshari as they say in English. <laughs> artistic koshari, everybody wants to do a thing and it has to be novel and, uh, yeah. and um, so that doesn't work, that really doesn't work, you know. Uh, uh, so we, we, we have to, in my opinion, there should be a, there should be a place, there should be a, a a place of education, you know, but for iconography, and people should be trained um, in iconography like they are trained to be deacons or priests or, or whatever it is. I think bishops should be trained uh, in iconography. In Russia, in Russia, for, or, or in Greece, I was I had a PhD student for 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 a while um, who was the secretary of the the. Um, whatever league of iconographers of uh, Greece or whatever it is. So yeah, he was quite up in there. And he was explaining to me that, you know, they have bishops sitting on the board who are totally trained in, in iconology and so on. They may not be painters them themselves, but they know all about, you know, um, iconography. So in this way, there is no way that uh, a Greek church would be covered with, with, with this kind of stuff like we, we see in the Coptic church. No way, no way, no way, no way. So, so uh, and the same in, 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 in Russia. I mean, Russia right now is going through an, an amazing revival uh, of, you know, in the Orthodox church and, and the iconography. They, I, I think they built like 80,000 churches in the last 10 years or something like that. It's just unbelievable. And, and, and they have like teams, you know, like hundreds of iconographers working together under a master. Um, I mean, it's just, you know, compared to the Coptic church, it's, it's, it's really unbelievable. So, so there's a lot, and, and it's not that there is no talent. In, in Egypt or, or in the Coptic Church. There is talent, you know, there's talent everywhere. But how this talent is being um, directed, how, how is it being fostered, right? Um, do we encourage, you know, are, are people encouraged to look at art, but not at art as art, but as liturgical art? There's a huge difference. So it's not because you can paint a thing that, you know, you, you can be an iconographer. No, no, no. As a matter of fact, I'm not interested in whether somebody can paint good or not. I'm interested in, the, in their, their attitude towards it. Because their attitude towards it will determine, you know, will determine if they can become iconographers or not, right? If they will or they will not. So it's all to do with attitude. And, um, I know, I know personally some very gifted young Copts, right? But their attitude is wrong, it's all wrong. It's all about ego, for a start. It's all about becoming famous, right? It's all about Facebook and getting likes on Facebook. <laughs> and, you know, it seems to me they actually paint to put, you know, for Facebook, not the church. So, so there's, uh, you know, I mean, Facebook, personally, I, I, I think for, I, you know, as far as iconography is concerned, Facebook is probably the worst thing ever, really. And, and, and it's helping to actually destroy whatever is left of it. Um, well that's, another, that's another point, anyway. Any other questions? Sorry. Let's take, let's take one yeah. more question, or two more questions, if right. I could. And then right. if there's, um, if, it, if, if it's okay with you, uh, people, those who have extra questions can stick around. Uh, right. And ask you first. I, I, yes, what I won't have. To I have to be somewhere between 1.30 and 2. So it's, it's okay. still good. It's still okay. good. So let's just take one or two more and then we'll do. The that, that works. That works. Yes, please. Um, so at what point of time iconology became uh, more structured in the Coptic Church or go back in history? Iconology or iconography? Uh, I Both. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, very good question. Iconography uh, has been, I mean, 
personally, I, I, I think that they were uh, that Egypt has some of the earliest icons in Christendom uh, from, for different reasons. You know, for instance, if you look at ancient Egypt, you look at uh, Saint, uh, you know, um, um, uh, the, the Virgin Mary, right? Virgin Mary, and you have these images of the Virgin Mary, early images like fifth, you know, fourth, fifth century, of the Virgin Mary on a throne and uh, you know suckling her child. Okay, you go to ancient Egypt and actually see images of Isis suckling her child, sitting on a throne. Okay. So I'm not saying that this went, um, y y you know, uh, that the, the Christians copied the, no, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is that the, the actual, the, some of the concepts were already existent in Egypt. For, for instance, the fight of Horus against Seth, right, when, Se when Horus actually transfixes the dragon of Seth, right, then you have an image of St. George um, or any of the Athlophoros, you know. So, so, um, yeah, that's the, you know, I think that Egypt was basically uh, very early, uh, had, you know, icons very, very early in Christendom. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's, that's where really where, where it, it, you know, it, it, it originates. Um, yes? What do you think of, uh, say, uh, like stained glass, you know, with icons or mosaics, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how that, you know, falls within I, 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 I. There is no great tradition of stained glass in Egypt. Uh, although, there, there, you know, you can find stained glass, but it's not the stained glass like in Europe with, you know, caming and uh, lead and all that. It's, it's more, it's, it's stained glass done with uh, plaster, okay, and, and colored glass and plaster, you know, it's, it's quite a, a different thing. So, but yes, I mean, anything, anything, uh, any traditional, you know, uh, technique or um, uh, material is acceptable in iconography. So, so mosaics, absolutely acceptable, yes. I mean, you know, Fanus, I remember when I was studying in Egypt, we did, we did you know, huge mosaics, like, you know, Khotn uh, Ab, Pantocrator, you know, in mosaics uh, with the nuns. The, the nuns are very good at, at cutting this. You have to be patient. patient. You know, yeah. But um, so, so yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How, how long will it take you to finish one of the uh, uh, Hodnilab? Well, we, we've been working now for two weeks solid and we are more than halfway through now. So hopefully this week or next week we'll, we'll be finished. But it will be a very special one because it's done in, in the tra traditional technique in, of in egg tempera, it's done in egg tempera. Um, whereas all the others in America are done in acrylic. Right? So acrylic is not a traditional material and it, it's, not an, it's not even an organic, it's inorganic, you know, it's plastic. So I was very you know, concerned about that because I hate using it. But sometimes when you don't have a choice, you have to, to, to use it, but this time, through a, through a Greek iconographer friend, I, I, I found just the right base coat so we can actually use egg tempera and the light is just unbelievable. I mean, it's really quite amazing. Thank you very much. I know uh, there's more questions. Uh, Dr. René, I hope we can hang out for an extra 10, 15 yes, minutes to answer yes. questions. Absolutely. Um, I'll just share uh, a personal thought because I think one of the other things that unfortunately has influenced uh, iconography and I well uh, painters slash uh, aspiring iconographers is that uh, because iconographers are, or painters artists in general historically have not been well paid uh, that people <laughs> oftentimes will just simply paint what is to the liking of the palette of the person in front of them uh, so that they can make a living um, and unfortunately, that's one of the reasons why we see so much diversity out there in iconography. And also, uh, we, we see it in our community because we have a number of artists in our community that are also, uh, we're wanting to encourage and support the arts. Um, iconography is, is, is beautiful because it's sacred art and it communicates our theology. Uh, and so it's, um, unfortunately, you, you go to Egypt and you can find an icon or a picture uh, that looks similar to an icon 
that you can pick up for uh, $10 uh, US uh, or $20 US, but to get a real icon, uh, it requires but you, a you, labor you, of love that you're you not going to find one. You, get one anyway. you won't, yeah, you won't find a, 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 an authentic icon in Egypt today. Yeah. This is That's a fact. Yeah. This is a fact. This so, is a fact. So, so we have minimized uh, the value of icons. Uh, we just think it's art that we throw up on the wall, and so people say, "Oh, well, just let's get something cheap and put it up." Uh, but what we're missing is that it's communicating the depth of our theology uh, through it. We may not even realize it, but it's communicating something very deep. Um, either way, art is communicating something. We want to make sure that what we're communicating is authentic. Right, so uh, thank you very much for uh, for You're coming welcome. and blessing us.